The middleweight division's really tired of Israel Adesanya, and it's clear to see why. He's beaten them all. Well, not all, as Alex Poetan Pereira is coming, and Izzy might see a third defeat. Or he might shut his haters up once and for all. Marvin Vittori's waiting for the former to happen, of course. But after UFC 210, he might be singing a different tune. Stick around, as we'll talk about his recent fight against Whitaker and what's in store for the 160-pound weight class next. First up, Vittori hates the middleweight king. It's easy to see why Vittori still has grudges towards Adesanya. He has lost two decisions against the middleweight champ, after all, but that doesn't mean that he hasn't given any good performances since then. The Italian fighter bounced back with a strong win over Paolo Costa in October of 2021 and gave fans a fight to remember. So, the whole MMA world's waiting to see Adesanya defend his belt against former kickboxing opponent Alex Pereira in the main event of UFC 281 on November 12th. Vittori actually expected to receive another shot at the crown if he defeats Whitaker, but that didn't exactly go to plan, did it? Coming up, Bobby Knuckles delivered one of his smoothest performances. Whitaker beat the Italian Dream by unanimous decision, and then declared himself the world's finest middleweight, with or without a belt. And after seeing his three-round dance around Vittori, no one else could disagree with him. The margin of victory in the fight began razor thin, but got larger and larger as the fight went on. Both men calmly figured each other out at a distance in the opening round, and both had some successful moments but you couldn't easily say who won the round. In round two, the tide shifted to Whitaker, who used his striking to dismantle the slower power puncher. The Reaper was very careful with his blows, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't successful when he threw them. The fight's most dramatic moment happened in round three, as Whitaker's head kick clearly hurt Vittori. Bobby Knuckles then followed with a couple of leaping right hands and a knee when the Italian was still a little shaky. A powerful combination staggered a bleeding Vittori once again in the last seconds, and when the bell rang, everyone in the stadium knew Whitaker would leave with his hand raised. Up next, Vittori has to do much more if he wants another title shot. In the press conference before the fight, Vittori spoke up about how he wanted Pereira to win so that there'd be more thrill, and he believed that another shot at the title was his. But after his performance with Vittori, that's not really true anymore. Of course, I'll get my win against him before I'm done with all this, but the things that he can do best, now he's painting his nails. A lot of Izzy's haters usually have something to say about how he conducts himself, but no one can deny how the champ dominated the Italian in both fights. Pereira has two kickboxing victories over Adesanya, one of which was a knockout. It should come as no surprise that Vittori thinks that Pereira can knock the stylebender down cold once more. I really hope he goes out in another oxygen mask, and I think it can happen because that's gonna be a kickboxing fight, Vittori said. Up next, Whitaker establishes himself as one of the greats. Except for champion Israel Adesanya, no one at middleweight has been able to defeat Robert Whitaker, which still remains true after UFC Paris. The 31 one-year-old stays atop the list of UFC middleweight contenders, improving to 13-0 versus opponents other than Adesanya since 2014. So it's clear that the Reaper isn't only the UFC's second best middleweight, but also one of the greatest fighters in the division's history, regardless of how he faces the current champion. Over the previous several years, the Australian has defeated practically every notable middleweight, including Vittori, Jared Cannonier, Derek Brunson, Darren Till, Kelvin Gastelum, and Brad Tavares, all of whom are presently ranked in the top 15. And when you consider his victories against other big names like Ronaldo Souza and Yoel Romero, well, there's simply no denying his status as one of the division's greats. Let's look at what Vittori had to say after the fight. So here's the thing, it takes a lot to put everything on the line and step into the octagon, especially when you're going against another top man like yourself. You have to remember, Whitaker might have been number one, but Vittori's number two himself. Following his defeat to the Reaper, Vittori stole the microphone from Michael Bisping and delivered an emotional statement in his native language. There wasn't anyone there to translate Italian, but we have to wonder what did he say. According to Luke Thomas, the Italian Dream apologized to the fans, praised his elite opponent, and asked the audience to show their support and love no matter the decision. Both fighters came into this fight looking for a win to cement their claim to Israel Adesanya's middleweight title, but it just wasn't Vittori's night. The Aussie must now wait for Izzy to defend his championship, and if the champ is once again defeated by the Poetan, Whitaker will very certainly be the man for the next shot. The Australian does have reason to be optimistic, but you never know in this unpredictable sport. Up next, what could be next for the Italian? Vittori will have to start over and make another massive recovery like he's done several times before. Even though he's not slipping down in the pecking order, he will require a few more victories before he can compete for the gold once again. A smart matchup for him could be either Jared Cannonier or Sean Strickland. Both fighters have power and could be a good stylistic matchup for him. He'll have to prove himself in whatever fight he next takes up, or else he won't be in the top 
title contention anymore anytime soon. Now for some other UFC news. UFC Fight Night 210 just took over in Paris, and it really wasn't your typical fight card. How could it be when it was the long-awaited debut of the UFC in France, where MMA was banned up until 2019? So, to match this memorial event, a stacked card was set, and boy, we weren't disappointed. Let's look at how Cyril Gaon represented France in the best way possible. Safe to say, Gaon was under a lot of pressure ahead of his fight. Not only did he face the incredibly dangerous Thai Bam Bam Tuivasa, but he was in front of his own city. Not just that, it was his chance to reestablish himself as the division's top contender after a decision defeat to the current heavyweight champ Francis Ngannou. And he did all of this. And he did it well. The French heavyweight was absolutely outstanding throughout the fight. If you look past how he was downed by Tuivasa's signature blow in round two, he was otherwise in complete control of the fight. He eventually scored a third round TKO with a searing onslaught to the body and head. But Gan's future remains uncertain following his huge victory. His loss to Ngannou is still in the rearview mirror, and to make matters worse, the champion is currently in a contract dispute with the UFC. All of these things just make the heavyweight championship situation even messier. In any case, Gan will be a key part of any decisions about Ngannou's uncontested championship or the introduction of an interim title if the champion doesn't fight again soon. Coming up, Joaquin Buckley couldn't back up all the talk. Joaquin Buckley faced the biggest fight of his career against Nasruddin Imavov, the number 12 ranked middleweight contender and hometown hero. He entered the fight without a rating, so there was definitely the possibility of a large reward. The American fought with a lot of heart and had a good third round, but he just couldn't back up his pre-fight trash talk. He couldn't deal with Imavov's major height and reach advantage, and couldn't get a proper tempo setup. So, even though he lost a unanimous decision, he did earn the respect of his opponent. Quite the accomplishment, given the bad blood that existed between them during the fight week and even during the fight itself. He's a warrior, Imavov said of Buckley after his victory. That's why I chose him. Let's be honest, the fans won this fight since it was actually supposed to be on the prelims instead. That would have been such a waste. Now, finally, let's look at a brilliant comeback by Gomi. Leon Edwards reminded all of us a few weeks ago that a fight isn't over until it's actually over. He did the unthinkable and knocked out pound-for-pound -pound king Kamaru Usman in the last minute of a welterweight title fight. It was a comeback people People are going to be talking about for years. We got a similar feeling in the second fight of the UFC Fight Night 2010 main event. William Gomi of Paris got engaged in a triangle choke in the closing minute of a bout with Dutchman Jarno Ahrens, which he looked like he was about to win by decision. The choke looked super deep, and a tap wouldn't have been shocking or unwise at all. But Gomi slid out of danger and survived the rest of the fight to win by a majority decision. He felt that he'd rather die than give up in front of his people. And well, it doesn't get any better than that. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think Alex Pereira will be able to defeat Adesanya, and will it be another knockout? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one, and thanks for watching.